has grown so much has also endured quite a lot of hardship. So in 1842, there was a fire in Hamburg. This fire destroyed a quarter of the city. It was so bad. In fact, as we go throughout the tour, if I ask you what happened to the building behind me, nine times out of ten, you are going to say it burnt down in the fire of 1842. Got that? The fire of 1842. Fantastic. <laughs> but also, Hamburg was hit quite badly by the first and especially the second world war. But I'm going to tell you more about this, about how it was affected by the Second World War later on. But after the war, Hamburg was um, under the control of Britain. And Britain took a lot of new media to Hamburg. And even today, Hamburg publishes most of the major newspapers and magazines in Germany. So it's still quite important for media here. But Hamburg today is once again free and proud to be die Freie und Hansestadt Hamburg, or the free and Hanseatic city of Hamburg. What other building shows this city pride more than our majestic city hall, our rat house? So let's go and have a look at it and get away from these evil monsters. But this one was built after that. It took 45 years to rebuild. It was a really long term, slow build process. I think it really paid off. Well, this building is actually built on a 1.6 meter thick concrete slab that's then supported by 4,000 tree trunks. So it's kind of interesting, right? That's what it's built on. Then if you look at the outside of this building, between each window, there's a different German Kaiser, a different German Emperor. All, oh, there's 20 of them all together. And this building was built round about the same time as German unification. So these German Kaisers, I think it really shows how proud Hamburg was to be part of this new Germany, this new united Germany. I think it's quite nice. And then above each of the windows, there's a different shield. And these are shields of former um, Hamburg senators but also towns, shields of the towns that Hamburg used to trade with. And the last thing on the facade of this building is that there's a tower in the middle and about halfway up this tower there is a symbol with red and it's got like a castle on it. See that? Yeah. Halfway up in the middle. Um, so this is what we believe the original Hammerburg looked like. This original castle that was built. We believe this is what it looks like. And it's this symbol is now the symbol of Hamburg. You find it all over the place. You find it on drain pipes to uh, bus shelters. It's everywhere. So if you've not noticed it before, you're probably going to see it around now. Okay, so that's the, that's the outside of the building. But inside the building is just as nice as the outside. One of the most uh, interesting things inside is actually a molten lump of silver. It doesn't sound so good. But this is one of the only things that they were able to save from this original Operation Gomorrah. At the time, it was the largest aerial bombardment. 
environment ever in history. It lasted just eight days and happened at the end of July 1943. So during these eight days, 17,000 planes flew over Hamburg. They dropped 101,000 bombs and dropped 1.6 million firebombs. They killed about 40,000 people, destroyed a third of all housing, and left 900,000 people homeless. But it wasn't the bombs, the initial impact of the bomb bombs that caused, the, caused the, all of this tragedy. A lot of the destruction was caused by the fires that the bombs created. So all of the fires that, that, were, that started were able to link up, creating great big huge firestorms. And all of this fire would, um, would push all of the hot air up and suck in the air from the outside, literally fanning the flames, making it worse and worse. The temperatures in the fires got up to 800 degrees Celsius. This is hot enough to melt glass. It's also hot enough to melt asphalt and asphalt that you find in pavement. People could be trying to escape the fire, only to be completely stuck in the pavement. Really a dreadful time for Hamburg. But after this initial bombardment, Hamburg only suffered a further 69 air raids. But these were just mosquito bombers. They didn't really cause much physical damage to the city. But it caused a lot of damage to the people, to the production process. So as soon as they heard of the, the air raids, like, they would run into their shelters. Because they remembered how terrible it was. 1943. They did not want a repeat of that, so they just tried to save themselves. Even though these bombs didn't actually cause much damage to the city. Now the bombing of Germany is a very controversial subject still in Germany today. You could be called a right-wing extremist, a neo-Nazi, for saying, for believing it was bad that so many civilians died in these bombings. So yeah, it's still very touchy. Arguably, the bombing of Germany just to further demoralize the people of Germany, making it easier to win the war, arguably. But today, this church stands here pretty much how it was left after 1943. There's just some bricks for structural reasons. And today, you can still go up the spire. It's still 147 meters tall, so you can get a really, really nice view of the city up there. But also, just behind you here, it's like a mini Louvre thing. And in here, we have all kinds of photos that were taken during the bombing. So I can tell you all these facts are bigger. It's not until you see photos that you, the extent of the damage really hits home. But to do both of these things, it's like less than five euros. So I'd really recommend coming back here if you have time later on today or tomorrow or whatever. But now, it's time for a little break. So you're going to head over to, to, the, to the Starbucks, I'm sorry, to have a, a wee break. But then after the break, I'm going to tell you all about this fire. Do you know how we keep going on about fire? I'll finally stop talking about it, but also for a grand finale, I will tell you the, the pilot, the story of our pirate, Klaus Stuckfeck. It's a great story. I love this story. I love pirates. 